often has to move because we trust the word of the Lord that God's not playing when he speaks about that. And so therefore we have to have that type of faith, that type of level of faith to trust God enough to speak to anything and believe that God will move it on our behalf. Is anybody listening to me at all? Okay, good. And then, then secondly, we've already dealt with adjuncts. You can be seated. Secondly, we've already dealt with the fact that we, we've been talking about, we talked about that his son is coming back. The Lord says that, that his son is going to return, that we don't know the day nor the hour when the son of man shall appear, but we do know that Christ is coming back. Okay? And when he said that, he wasn't playing. I know it's been a long time, and I know you, you may have grew up in church, and they were saying that when you would knee high to a grasshopper, uh, but God wasn't playing. When he said that, he is going to bring that to pass. He is going to do exactly what he said he was going to do. Then thirdly, at our 8 o'clock session on this morning, we dealt with God ain't playing about your call, about the fact that God called you to something. There's something on your life, and that the Bible says in Romans 11 and 29 that the gifts and callings of God are not withdrawn. He does not take them back. So in other words, God's going to get you to where he wants to get you to as it relates to your assignment and your purpose in life. And he's not playing about that. He don't care what comes. He don't care what happened. He don't care how your bank account look. He don't care how your hairstyle look. God's going to get you to where he wants to get you to. And so God is not playing about that. This afternoon, I, I have one of the unpopular subjects that I'm going to deal with again. Um, starting in Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. We're going to re read verses 21 and 22. And uh, this will be very unpopular, so I definitely don't expect too many amens out of you this morning. So um, hopefully you already got your shouting and your dancing and your, you did the Willie Nelson when, when he was doing the Willie Nelson. Uh, hope you got that in because you probably ain't going to do the Willie Nelson on this. Um, yeah, uh-oh. Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 and 22. We'll be reading out the New Living Translation. Annette, who's directly behind me, I believe she's directly behind me. Yeah, she's directly behind me. She's going to be reading the scriptures just in case you think there's an angel in here reading and you don't know where it's coming from. Okay. She is an angel, by the way, but I meant one of those that came straight from heaven. There wasn't no all moment. It wasn't that deep. It just really, it really wasn't. Okay. Matthew chapter 18, verse 21 and 22. To Annette, read for me, please. Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. It's time to leave. <laughs> All right, this morning I'm going to talk to you about forgiveness. I'm going to talk to you about forgiveness. Hallelujah. I'm going to talk to you about forgiveness. And uh, this is, what a word here. Can, can you imagine? Here comes Peter, and Peter shows up, and he's talking to the Lord. And no doubt Peter is getting ready to suggest some unusual grace. Peter comes to the Lord and says, hey, Lord, um, if I get somebody that sins against me, a brother that sins against me, that, that does something wrong against me, that talks about me, that lies on me, that cheats me, that takes my parking spot out there in the parking lot. Yeah, if I get that to happen, if I come in and somebody is sitting in my seat, they know I sit here every Sunday. Know I sit here. Should I forgive him? And if I do forgive him, shouldn't I forgive him seven times? Because that sounds real deep. Seven, that's God's perfect number. Seven times. Should I forgive him? Seven times. No doubt he really felt, you know, really, really religious and felt like he really had it going on. But the Lord kind of took the time, thought about it, and said, well, let me tell you, um, I'm going to take your seven, and I'm going to times it times 70. Okay? So he says, I don't want you to give your, forgive your brother seven times, but I want you to forgive your brother 70 times seven, which equals 400 and 90 times, okay? And that's one day, by the way, because every day you wake up to a new mercy and a new grace. <sighs> okay. So he says, I want you to be able, literally what he's saying here, he's saying that I want you to give unlimited, indefinite forgiveness to this side over here. Seems like they don't want to... Unlimited, indefinite forgiveness to your brother. 
to your sister, to the person that talked about you, to the one that lied on you, to the one that looked at you the wrong way, to the, this is, he wants us to forgive, forgiveness to them, okay, since y'all amen and y'all feeling good, to your husband, to your wife, he wants you to forgive them for what they have done to you, for how they've wronged you, how they cheated you, how they didn't treat you right, how they cussed at you, how they lied on you. Yeah, he wants us, hey, y'all, where y'all at now? He wants y'all to forgive them and not just forgive them one time, two times, three times, four times, five times. We're going to be here a while, okay? Six times, seven times, eight times. Not, we're going to be here a while, okay? Ten times, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 30. I'm tired. And so on, and so on, and so on. He wants us to forgive them that many times. <laughs> this must be a joke. This got to be a, this. Lord, you got to be joking. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me. No, no. You, you got you. Did, you got to be joking, right? I mean, you really got to be joking. You, you really got, seriously, Lord, you want me to forgive them that many times? You mean every time I come home, she act the same way, and you want me to, for, I mean, every time he come to the house, he act the same way, and you want, why y'all ain't talking to me now? You want me to forgive them? Seriously? He sinned against me, should I forgive him? Absolutely. Let's talk about what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is defined as concluding, concluding, Resentment, indignation, or anger as a result of an offense or mistake. Forgiveness is defined as concluding. Y'all know what concluding means, don't you? Bringing it to an end. Resentment, indignation, or anger as a result of an offense or mistake. Ceasing to, de to demand punishment or restitution. Which means that I'm no longer seeking any punishment for you. Read it one more time. Okay. Forgiveness is defined as concluding resentment, indignation, or anger as a result of an offense or mistake, ceasing to demand punishment or restitution, which also means that in my forgiveness, not only am I, am I no longer seeking any punishment, I am not praying for God to do anything to you as well. Because I know how you good Christian people are. You'll say, well, you know, okay, I'm going to forgive them, and I, I ain't going to do nothing to them, but I sure want the Lord to get them. <laughs> Forgiveness is not even praying that the Lord will break their legs and cause two of their teeth to fall out. <laughs> Forgiveness says, I am concluding this resentment. I am bringing this to a closure. This is over. This is done with. I'm not bringing this up anymore so that this can be a, a, a contention between me and you any longer. Don't worry. I know you're not amen in none of this. I know it. I know it. That's why I'm just going on and preaching it and, and letting it hit where it may hit and just moving on, okay? Forgiveness is the act of excusing or pardoning others in spite of their slights, their shortcomings, and their errors. It is the act of excusing or pardoning others in spite of their slights, their shortcomings, and errors. In other words, how you slighted me, forgiveness says, I'm going to pardon you about that. I'm going to excuse you. I'm just going to let you go. I'm just going to, you slighted me, but I'm going to let you go. You didn't call my name, but um, I'm going to pardon that. I'm going to let you go. You didn't shake my hand at the service, but uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let that, I'm gonna let that go. I'm, you spoke to somebody right beside me and didn't speak to me, but I'm going to. Because you slighted me. Isn't this amazing what we get trapped in by the devil 
as if this is some great big issue. Why didn't you speak to me? You were standing right, you were standing right there and you spoke to somebody right beside me. Why didn't you speak to me? That's what, that's what we are more concerned about. Is that somebody, and so what we do when we get forgiveness, even though I didn't speak to you, you still pardon me for not speaking to you. Whether I did it by mistake or intentionally. Oh, see, y'all didn't say nothing right there. See, you make your, your forgiveness conditional. If they did it by mistake, I'll forgive them, but they did it intentionally. There is, no, there is absolutely no requirement, no asset test for how you give forgiveness. You give forgiveness whether or not they did it to you intentionally or whether they did it by mistake. Okay, I'm going to move on because this ain't going well. Hallelujah. So it's the act of excusing the pardon others in spite of their slights, their shortcomings, and their, er and their errors. Now, why is forgiveness so hard? Why is it so hard? Well, forgiving a wrongdoer is difficult because we feel like we're letting the wrongdoer get off the hook. <sighs> Come on now. We feel like we're letting you get away with something. If I just forgive you, then you're getting away with something. If I forgive you because you abuse me, then I'm letting you get away with something. If I forgive you because you talked about me, then I'm letting you get away with something. If I forgive you because you said something you shouldn't have said, then I'm letting you get away with something. And I don't want to let you get away with something. Therefore, forgiveness to me is very hard. Isn't it, y'all? It's very hard because I don't want you to get away with nothing. But you got to understand this. To forgive is to release. Forgive is to release. Forgive is to re It is to let go. It is, it is this. It is this. I, I read this quote. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, yeah. To, for to, for to give forgiveness is to set a prisoner free and discover that the prisoner was you. Oh, yeah, y'all was really excited about that till I got to the end. Yeah, to forgive is to set a prisoner free and discover that the prisoner is you. When you, when you hold resentment and grudges and are always upset about what somebody did to you, you don't even recognize you're the one in bondage. You're the one that's not free. You're the one that's walking around on eggshells and all upset and mad. And you're the one. You need to free yourself by forgiving somebody else. It is to let go. It is to become free. Matter of fact, forgiveness, by the way, has very little to do with your feelings or even whether or not you trust the person. You forgive them because you want to be released from the bondage that you place your own self in by allowing them to have that much effect over you. Are you listening to me at all? He says to Peter, he said, listen, Peter, I want you to give, forgive 70 times. 70. I ain't playing about that. This is something that I really want from my people. You that are sitting up here and y'all would run around the church, jumping, speaking in tongues, knocking folk over and all that kind of stuff. Y'all are the very ones I'm talking to. Because it's amazing to me that you can do all that shouting and dancing, speaking in tongues and chicken winging, but you can't forgive somebody when they wrong you. If the Holy Ghost can give you the power to speak in tongues, the Holy Ghost can give you the power to speak to somebody sitting right beside you. Ooh, excuse me. Right, so... We got to forgive, forgive. It is one of the, it is one of the chief characteristics of a Christian, the ability to forgive someone who has wronged them, who has did them, did them a disservice. Okay. Um, to forgive is to give up all hope of a better past. I need y'all to hear what I just now said. To forgive is to give up all hope of a better past. When I forgive, because can I tell you this? You can't change what they did. No way. The past ain't going to get no better if you hold on to the grudge. The past ain't going to get no better if you give evil for what they did. Yeah, the past ain't going to get no better. The past ain't going to get no better if, if he had an affair, now you're going to go have an affair. It ain't going to change the fact that he had one. Oh, y'all don't want me to go to stuff like that, right? Just leave that stuff alone. No, 
it, it ain't going to get no better. It, it, it ain't going. So therefore, I'm giving up all hope for a, a better past. What I'm saying is I want the future and the present to become better. And therefore, I'm giving you this forgiveness so that we can move on from that, from the damage that happened in our past. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. And so, therefore, we need to get to this place of forgiveness. Because the weak can never forgive. Forgiveness is the attribute of the strong. I know we put it the other way around. We feel like that forgiveness is the attribute of the weak. Weak people forgive. No, strong people forgive. Because if I'm able to forgive you for what you did for me, baby, you better know there's some strongness in me. <laughs> there's, a, there's a spirit in me that's beyond me that's helping me to forgive. Because really, in the body of Christ, we need to understand that forgiveness is really, really not an act of the flesh. It's an act of the spirit. It takes the spirit in order for us to submit ourselves and offer forgiveness to people and say, Lord, help me so I can do this from the heart and not just an action of my flesh. God ain't playing about that, y'all. God wants us to forgive. He wants us to forgive, forgive each other for what, we, what has been done to us. Forgive. And it's hard to forgive, especially when it comes to money. I ain't had nobody, I ain't got, uh, I ain't got nobody saying nothing to me. Here. That's all that especially when it comes to money. When you know you gave somebody some money and they say they're going to give you the money back and they ain't gave you the money back yet. And, you, and then they got the nerve to be buying stuff. Come on now. I'm, I'm just talking. They got the nerve to be buying stuff. They got a new car out there. And you wondering where that $250 I gave you when you didn't have a car. And I was picking you up, and you asked me for that two hundred fifty dollars, and now you don't want to act like you. <sighs> oh, come on, y'all! Why y'all ain't talking to me? It takes the spirit of the Lord to be able to submit ourselves to the spirit of the Lord and and forgive them. Now I didn't say I forgot; I said I forgave. I'm sorry. I mean, in my mind, stuff stay in my mind. I mean, it's it's there, but I don't I don't act upon what's in my mind. I act upon what's in my spirit, what's in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost says, "Forgive you," then I forgive you. There ain't number Bible. The Bible says Lynn not expecting to return. That's what the Bible says. I don't like it, but the Bible says it. I want you to understand something. I'm your pastor. I don't like everything the Bible says, but I got to live what the Bible says regardless of what I feel about it. Because God ain't playing when he says what he says about forgiveness. Come on now. So touch somebody and ask them, who, has, who have you not forgiven in here? Okay. <clears throat> I guess we shouldn't go there, huh? <laughs> Let me show you a little bit more in this scripture. Okay, I hope you haven't closed your Bible. Let me show you a little bit more in this scripture. I'm feeling good. I think this is the best series I ever preached in my life, man. I, when I finish preaching this, man, I'll be walking off this day like, yeah, that was good right there. I feel like this is good because this is going to help us to get somewhere. Because we as, we as a body can never get anywhere spiritually if we are against each other. If there's always grudges and resentment that is among each other, we really can't go anywhere. Because as soon as one go up, we pull them back down because we don't want to see them get anywhere. Because we don't like them. We don't want to see them achieve anything. We don't want to see them get up in God. We don't want to see them uh, be uh, uh, prosperous in God. But when you start forgiving if somebody, people that did you wrong, you want to see them lift it up. Because you know you're next in line to see God do something for you. Is it? Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Okay, come on. Am I preaching or something? Why are you playing the organ? <laughs> okay, Matthew chapter 18. It just dawned on me. Matthew chapter 18. Let's go right back there. Matthew chapter 18. I want you to see this parable that now that Jesus brings up about forgiveness. Matthew chapter 18, beginning at verse 23. We're going to read all the way down. All the way down to somewhere. I might be the end of the chapter. I don't know. Um, but Matthew chapter 18. Come on, y'all ready? Come on, let's read this thing. Matthew chapter 18, verse 23. Again, New Living Translation. Okay? And that when you're there, come on, I'll let you read. I'm going to take a break. Get me some water. Okay? Therefore... The kingdom of heaven mm -mm, can that, be it? compared to a king who decided to bring his account up to date with servants who had borrowed money from him. Yes, Lord. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Um, the king of, kingdom of heaven compared to a, a king who decided to bring up his account. All right. He wanted to check out all his servants who borrowed money. Read. In the process, uh -huh. one of his debtors was brought in who owed him millions of dollars. Oh, Jesus. Whew. Yeah, he owed him millions of dollars. Read. He couldn't pay. Couldn't pay. So the king ordered that he, his wife, his children. Did you did you change translations on Wait me or something? I'm sorry. Wait a minute. <laughs> Start again, verse twenty-five. He couldn't pay. Uh -huh. So his master ordered 
that he be sold uh -huh. along with his wife, Sell him, his, his, wife, children, his children, and everything he owned to pay the debt. He about to debt. have a yard sale. Everything he owned to pay the debt. Read. Come on. But the man fell down before his master. But the man fell and down before begged him. and begged him. Please, please be patient with be me. Be patient with me. And I will pay it all. Oh, and I will repay it all. Come on. Then his master was filled with pity then for him. Then his master was filled with pity for him. And he released him. And he released and him. And forgave his debt. Oh, my God. Millions of dollars. The dude fell on his face before him and begged him, be patient with me. I will pay it. And he said, you don't have to pay it. Look, his master was filled with pity for him. And he released him and forgave him the debt. In other words, you don't even have to pay the debt. You're free from it. Good, good, we good. Okay, check this out. All right, come on, read some more. But when the man left the king, the man who just got forgave of his debt left the king. He went to a fellow servant. Went who to owed a fellow him servant who was on the same level he was. Dollars. He went to a fellow servant. Wait a minute. He left the king. The king forgave him his debt. The king. The king forgave him his debt. He went to the church service and found the member of the church that was on the same level he was on. He went to him, and this person that was on the same level he was on owed him a few thousand dollars. A few thousand dollars. Read, what happened? He grabbed him by the throat. He grabbed him not by the throat. No, 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 that's, 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 that's too, that, that ain't hood right there. He grabbed him by the throat. <laughs> he grabbed him. He grabbed him by the throat, uh-huh, and did what? Put and the mic on. And payment. demanded instant payment. Hold up, hold up. He went to the king and said, be patient with me. I'm going to get you what I owe you, but I need you to be patient with me. The king said, no, that's okay. I'm going to release you and I'm going to forgive your debt. Now he goes to somebody and he says, I want instant payment. Not only, not, I don't want you just to pay me, but I want you to pay me right now. Don't this sound like church folk? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We go to the king, all that mess you done done. All that lying you done done. All that cheating you done done. All that adultery you done done. All that clubbing you done done. All that drinking you done. All that you done. All that stuff you done. And then you go to the king and the king forgives you. And then, y'all ready? You have the audacity, the unmitigated call to go to somebody in the church and demand that they pay you restitution for something they did to you. You must be out of your cotton-picking mind. Check this out. He goes to his fellowship and he says, listen, I demand an instant payment. Read, read verse 29. Come on, let's have this. Come on. His fellow servant fell down before fellow him. Fellow servant fell down before him and begged for a little and more time. And begged for a little more time. Be patient with me. Be patient with me. And don't, I will pay it. Don't this sound he familiar? He pleaded. Read. But his creditor wouldn't wait. But his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested. Had the man arrested. And put in prison. Put in prison. Until the debt could be paid in full. Okay, now hold up. Now remember what this what to begin by saying in verse number 27. The kingdom of heaven can be compared to this. Don't, don't miss this point. We, we're not listening to just an abstract story here. The kingdom of heaven can be compared to this. Okay? Whatever verse we're on, let's read it. Come on. Let me hurry up. What verse? 31. 31. Come on. When some of the other servants saw this, uh -huh. they were very upset. They were very upset. They went to the king because and they told knew him what the king had delivered him that from. Had happened. They knew that they knew the club you came out of. So now they come in. This... When some of the servants saw him, they were very upset. They went to the king and told him everything that had happened. Read. Then the king called in the man. Then the king called he in the man. He had forgiven and uh -huh, said, uh -huh. you evil servant. You evil servant. I forgave you I forgave that you tremendous you debt. That tremendous because debt. Because you pleaded with me. Because you plead with me. Read. Shouldn't you have mercy Shouldn't on you your have fellow mercy on your, servant uh -huh. just as I had mercy on you? Read. 
Then the angry king. This is what the kingdom of heaven is like. Then the angry king sent the man to prison. Sent the man to prison to be tortured. Not just sent him to prison, but he sent him to prison to be tortured until he had paid his entire debt. Y'all don't read these scriptures, do you? You just you just read the stuff about. Okay, all right. Now get ready for this. Get ready for this. I don't know if y'all ready for this. Get ready for this. Y'all ready? Okay. Here we go. Verse 35. Read it. That's what my heavenly father will do to you if you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from the heart. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold, 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 hold. Just case you think God playing. This is what Jesus said. Jesus said, you see that story right there where that king took that unforgiving servant and cast him in the prison to be tortured. He said, that's what my heavenly father, you know, the father that y'all talk about, the father that's all love. And and he said, that's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive. Here's the problem. We refuse to forgive. Some of you, even when I finish preaching this message, you're going to refuse to forgive. You are not even going to try. You're not even going to get this message a second thought because there are certain people in your life that you get pleasure out of holding them in resentment and hatred and you have no desire in your heart to forgive and you ain't even going to try it. He says, see, y'all don't like my message. That's all right. He says, if you, see, y'all, y'all want to be Christians, let's talk about how to be a real Christian, okay? If you refuse to forgive your brothers and your sisters and check out how we, the expectation and do it from the heart, not lip service, not no lip service, not little, I'm just going to check the block because Pastor Jones said do it. No, I'm going to do it because the Bible says do it. And I'm going to do it from the heart. Which means that when I do it from the heart, all those definitions that I gave you earlier, now I'm ending all hostility. I'm ending all resentment. I'm... What's up with y'all? Why are y'all looking at me like that? I'm ending all that. Why? Because I'm doing it from the heart. Usually the choir is on my side, but I don't know right now. I mean, usually, usually because we're close up here on the stage, it's kinda, we kind of connect in spirit, but right now I feel a disconnection. No? Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. I don't know. I might move over here right now. He says, listen, you got to do it from the heart. Come on, say, Lord, Lord, help me to forgive from my heart. God ain't playing about this now. His, his reason why what you see doesn't pray. Oh, I got another verse, don't I? Should I read the next verse too? Okay. All right, check out the next verse, okay? First of all, again, it says, that's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. And by the way, by the way, note what this message is dealing with. Since I'm preaching to my church people, he says, your brothers and sisters, he's talking about us as a family. You know why I'm saying that? Because sometimes it can be so easy to forgive people out there. But when it comes to us in here, we feel like they should have knew better. Absolutely. They should have knew better. But that gives you no right to hold them in unforgiveness. It's like, it's like, you know, it, you, you know, there, there are certain families where brothers and sisters don't talk for years and stuff like that because of what goes on. You know, may it, may it happen when mama passed away. You know, that's sometimes the ugliest time. You know, a parent passed away, then all of a sudden everybody fighting over the, over the, over the, uh, the, the 22 inch black and white TV she had, and we're gonna fight over that, and we don't want to talk. Now we ain't talking to each other for years and all that other kind of stuff, and it becomes so hard to forgive our own siblings, our own brothers and sisters, and the same as it is in the natural, it is in the spiritual, that many times it's hard for us to forgive each other. But if there's forgiveness given to anybody, we ought to certainly forgive each other because we know what it took for all of us to get to where we are right now. If it wasn't for the forgiveness of the Lord, none of us be sitting here right now with your suits on and, your, and them shoes you got on. We're going to have a shoe show one day. 
for True Mind Ministry women, because y'all be wearing some shoes. I'm telling you, y'all be wearing them. But, but, but you wouldn't have, be looking all good walking around here with them, them six inch stilettos that you got on if it wasn't for God. You might have been wearing them in the club, but thank God now you're wearing them in the church. Why y'all ain't saying nothing to me? Because he forgave us. And now we walk with pride because we've been forgiven by God. We got to give that same forgiveness to others as well. We got to be able to forgive. And so, so then this is what it says. He says, if you, if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart, listen what it says. Verse, verse, what verse is this? What verse? Is there another verse? Oh, well, let's go to Matthew 6 and 15 so you can see what I'm reading. <laughs> I knew I had another verse. Matthew 6 and 15. I appreciate y'all helping me to preach because y'all know I get lost sometimes. Matthew 6 and 15. Remember it says, this is what the Father's going to do to you if you, if you refuse to forgive. Well, Matthew 6 and 15 going to take it right up. Come on, and that 615. But if you refuse to forgive others. If you others, refuse to forgive others. Your Father will not forgive your sins. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. If you don't forgive Cynthia for what she did, she took your parking spot. If you don't forgive Cynthia because she saw you get ready, she saw your blinker on, and you're about to go into that parking spot, and she came up with her little black SUV and whipped in there real quickly and then had the nerve to get out with her Starbucks coffee cup in her hand and wave at you and say, God bless you. Okay. <laughs> I got that right. If I ain't getting nothing else right, I got that right. You have to give forgiveness to her for taking your parking lot if you want God to forgive you for gossiping last night. Uh, if you want God for, to forgive you for your lying, you have to forgive Cynthia for what she did. Okay, I know. Y'all are going, well, I don't believe that. I don't believe it. Well, if you refuse to give others, your fathers will not, your father, excuse me, will not forgive you your sins. Okay, well, check this out then. Let's even go a little bit further. I, I'm going everywhere now. Mark eleven twenty four. Check this out. Mark eleven twenty four. Okay? Mark eleven twenty four. So I can talk to you real deep Christian folk. Saints and friends. I want to talk to you real, yeah, I want to talk to y'all. Check this out. Mark 11. 24. I want to talk to you worshipers and all that other kind of stuff. Check this out. Mm-hmm. Intercessors. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on. Y'all ready? All right. Mark 11, 24, 25. And that read. I tell you. I tell you. You can pray for anything. You can pray for anything. And if you believe. And if you believe. That you receive it. That you receive it. It will be yours. It will be yours. Hallelujah. Wait a minute now, can I? Hold on. Yeah, you can pray for anything, and if you believe, that's what, I mean, this is how we read scripture. We just stop right there. Woo! 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 I mean, that's what we do. We stop right there. You know, I can pray for anything, and I'm going to get it. Hallelujah. All right, let's check out verse 25 now. Read this. Uh-huh, read and that. But when you are praying. But when you are praying. Hold up. I don't know if I want to read the rest of this. But when you are praying, read. First forgive anyone. First forgive. First. 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 In other words, stop your praying. And do this first. First forgive anyone. Any. Is that, y'all say the same thing? Is it up there? Okay. First forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against oh my lord my husband my wife my supervisor my co-worker oh lord jesus that's the anyone verse right there i think i want to go back to the brothers and sisters verse now we got the anyone if you are holding a grudge against anyone here's the reason why you do it read your father so in that heaven your father in heaven will forgive, your, will sins forgive too. your sins too so before you go rejoicing about you're gonna get anything you gotta first stop and pray lord let me forgive whoever i need to forgive 
of any grudges that I'm holding against them because of what I did or what they did or whatever happened. I need to forgive them. Oh, see, y'all don't like this stuff. Y'all like the stuff of just, you know, the stuff we don't really get to the real, real, or how we ought to live as a Christian. We, we don't like this. But let's just move on from this and let's talk about purpose. <laughs> Talk about purpose. <laughs> All right. Um, same verse, King James Version. I don't have it. I don't have it. Same verse, King James Version. You got an iPad. Well, bless God. <laughs> she all right. She got a tablet right there. Give you a second. Praise the Lord. See, when the pressure is on, she was reading scriptures and everything, but now she's under pressure. She under pressure now. I appreciate, praise the Lord. Yes, 24. <laughs> and when you stand praying, therefore, uh, give me 20, next verse. Next verse. Therefore. Oh, she reading that verse. Go ahead. You don't want me to Go read? Go ahead, read. Therefore, mm -hmm. I say unto you, uh -huh. what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, uh -huh. and ye shall have them. Yes, read. And when ye stand praying, uh -huh. forgive. Forgive. If ye have aught against any. If you have aught against any. Uh -huh. That your Father also, which is in heaven, uh -huh. may forgive you your trespass. Okay. It, that's the Bible. That's what the Bible says. There's another scripture that says this. It says, hey, listen. When you come to the altar, because y'all are altar people. Y'all love the altar. I mean, y'all just... Y'all love the altar. We're going to have intercessory prayer. We're going to the altar. The, fast, the pastor finished preaching. We're going to the altar. Y'all love the altar. The Bible says this. The Bible says when you come to the altar, if you remember that you have alt against somebody or that there's somebody that you need to forgive, it says leave your gift at the altar and go to your brother and be reconciled to your brother. Go to your brother. So the next time you up here asking God to do something for you and you remember that you just had a fight out in the best of you with somebody. Well, praise the Lord. I mean, let's deal with the real, real. Let's not deal with the fake. You just had a fight out in the, in the best of you with somebody. What you need to do is leave the altar. Go find the person that you had a fight with and say, hey, let's, 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 let's get this taken care of right now. Because, listen, I forgive you. I, I, I don't need you to forgive me. See, some of y'all too deep. I'll forgive you if you forgive me. No, that ain't what the Bible said. The Bible gives me the responsibility of forgiving you. Now, what you do is between you and God. But I'm going to tell you this. The same scriptures that apply to me apply to you. All right? So I'm going to forgive you because I'm trying to get out of the bondage that I'm in. Because I don't know. I, let me tell y'all something. I've been in unforgiveness before, so I know what I'm talking about. You can be in a good, hot church service, and that person can flash in your mind and switch the entire atmosphere of what's going on. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's hot. And all of a sudden, you remember that. You know, oh, I'm right, right back to where the offense occurred. Amen. Y'all can, as a matter of fact, I don't think I read something. I don't think I read something. Hold on, let me read something. Hold on, let me read something. This is crazy preaching. Um, but let me read something. Oh, here it is. Listen to this. I, I read this. I think this was on quotes.com or something like that. I like reading quotes. It says, when you hold resentment against another, you are bound to that person or condition by an emotional link that is stronger than steel. You are bound to that person emotionally tell the truth tell, come on let's tell the truth when you are operating because y'all know something about unforgiveness when you're operating in unforgiveness you are so bound emotionally that when you see them brother brother um um javon what was it you you go from boiling you go from 200 212 degrees if you at 211 degrees water don't boil but when you go to 212 water boils well you know what you do? Your blood does on the inside of you? When you see that person that you ain't forgiven, you go to 212 immediately. Your blood starts boiling. You have an emotional reaction to seeing that particular person. Why? Because you have not offered them forgiveness, and it just makes you mad they still on the earth. 
Let's tell the truth. Let's tell the truth. Let's tell the truth because I ain't trying to hurt you. I'm trying to kill you. Let's tell the truth. Let's stop all this, you know, all this. What we're trying to do, we ain't trying to hurt you. We're trying to kill you. We, try, we, we, wish you would, we wish you would just drop dead and die. See, y'all only want me to go there with you, but I'm telling you the truth. What's been going on in your heart? What's been going on in your mind? And you have an emotional wreck. You don't even understand that that person is in the commissary with their basket full and even studying you. How many calories? Yeah. Huh? And you see them and you going down another aisle with your Holy Ghost filled self all upset and mad. And now you're going to leave the commissary you so mad and not even going to get your ding dongs because you mad at them. Something wrong with that. Something is wrong with that. You went in there to get your ding dongs and you ain't even getting them. Because you got an emotional reaction to the fact that they upset you. And that's the way you want to live. I don't want to live like that. God says I'm supposed to forgive because God don't want me living like that. He said I come that you might have life. Y'all don't want me to put the Bible to you. He said I come that you might have life and have life more abundantly. So when I'm in the commissary, I don't care who in there, I'm supposed to be having abundant life. And I cannot afford to allow you to have that much power over me. To keep me in bondage like that. Where I can't even come to church and praise God. Uh-uh. The devil is a liar. I can't let you. I forgive you and I'm going on. God ain't playing about this, y'all. God ain't playing about this. Okay. Let me hurry up. A couple more notes and I'm gone. A couple more notes and I'm gone. It's not one o'clock yet. A couple more notes and I'm gone. God's forgiveness of us, based upon, based upon the parable that we read in Matthew 18, God's forgiveness of us demands that we forgive others. God's forgiveness of us demands that we forgive others. That's, let me tell you something. That's one of my motivating things because I'm, I'm very, at times, I can be very fleshly and want to see something happen to people. But God's forgiveness of me, when I remember how God forgave me, it demands that I forgive others. And don't hold them down, and especially as a pastor, because as a pastor, I'm empowered as a pastor, okay? I see you do something wrong, I can sit your hind parts down for the next 17 years if I want to. Absolutely. Absolutely. I can get up here every week and just talk about you personally through the microphone. And I've seen pastors do it. I don't know why y'all looking at me like that. I can put all your business out at one time, okay? But because I know what God forgave me from, I forgive you of what you have done and don't put your business out. You know when you really forgive, let me tell you how you really forgive. How you speak about them on Facebook. Whoa. And some of you are some of you, some of you, I think I thank God I have the Holy Spirit. Because some of you put, you know, messages on Facebook and you don't name people. But what you try to do is you try to put it in a way that it sounds general. But in your little nasty spirit, it's very specific about somebody. And what I do is when I read it, I say, God, give me some discernment so I can know who sister such and such is talking about. Let me tell you something. When you're mad at somebody and angry at somebody, the first thing that you need to do is sign off for Facebook. Don't sign on, sign off. Because you're going to say something stupid. And most of y'all ain't doing nothing but saying stupid stuff and wasting people's time on your timeline reading your stupid stuff. I am preaching better than y'all amen in me. You're about to make me tune up in here. Y'all gonna make me lose my mind. Up in, no, I got it, I got it. So the Bible, the Bible, let me close. The Bible clearly tells us that we need to forgive. Clearly. It's one of the very hallmarks of being a Christian, the ability to forgive. 
Forgiveness affects our prayer life. We've already looked at it. It affects your prayer life. If you're praying and you ain't forgive, God don't want to hear your prayer. He wants you to first go seek forgiveness and get that relationship together. It affects our worship life all up here. To worship you. I live. To worship you. I live. Let, me, let me tell you what worship is. Worship is going to somebody and say, hey, let's I forgive you. That's worship. So forgiveness is very important. Here's what we pray. We even pray it. We even pray it and don't even know we're praying it. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. See, you don't even know what you're praying. What you just now said is, Lord, forgive me as I forgive others. That's what you just said. You praying to pray yourself. God honors his word. So he ain't going to forgive you until you forgive others. Because you prayed it. And God answers your prayer. Remember, when you pray, expect to receive it. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying nothing now. So here's what you receive. No forgiveness. Why? Because that's what you pray. Lord, I don't want you to forgive me until I forgive those who trespassed against me. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Whoever's in debt to me, don't forgive me of mine until I forgive them. Or as I'm doing it. Oh, well, praise Jesus. Okay, so it's time to forgive. Listen to me. Forgiveness is holding you back. It's not holding the other party back. It's holding you back. And you got to forgive. It's one of the hallmarks of being a Christian. It's one of the things that we must show. And Jesus says, listen, I expect you to do this. I ain't playing about this. This is not one of those messages that you just hear and just think, hey, that sounded so good. No, he wants you to forgive. There are people in your life that have done you wrong. Done you wrong. You got to forgive them. You got to forgive them. You absolutely have to forgive them. I wish they wouldn't have done to you what they did to you. But we can't change that now. You got to forgive them. We always, I've always said of especially things like abuse and things that go on that just are really, just, we don't want to talk about it. You know, really don't want to talk about it. But, until you, forgive, until you give forgiveness, your life is really right at that point, right there. Because every time you think about what they did to you, it takes you back to being 13 years old when it happened to you. And you feel that same pain, that same aggravation, the same things that were going on, they come back up again. Why? Because I remember what they did. Some of you have been through divorces. I know this is going to be hard, but let me say it anyway. You have to forgive the other person what they did. I ain't say remarry them. I say forgive them. You got to forgive them. Because if you continue to hold that grudge, you ain't ready for another spouse. Seriously. You ain't ready. And here's why you're not ready for another spouse. Because if I do anything, if perhaps if I become the new spouse, and I'm already married, I'm just using myself as an illustration, but perhaps I become the new spouse. If I do something that even remotely looks like what the other person done, then you coming down on me. And I'm wondering, whoa, what's wrong? What's wrong with you, eh? I didn't do that to you. All I was asking you was, could I go watch the game with my boys? I ain't trying to go sleep with nobody. I can't go out the house because of what your former husband did or your former wife did. As you got to... F- this is better teaching than the eight minutes I'm getting. You, you, you... Okay, and so we've, we've got to forgive. We've got to be able to do it, and we can do it. One of the tricks of the devil is to make us think that we cannot forgive, but God gives us the spirit. He says, the words that I speak, they're spirit. God gives us the spirit. He speaks the word and says, do it. Anything that he says to us to do, he gives us the ability to do. And so, therefore, we can forgive. So, there might be people in your life that you just need to forgive. You might, you might need to leave this service today, go home, call somebody and say, hey, listen, I forgive. I forgive. I forgive. It's a hard thing to do. I tell the story all the time about, you know, there was an issue in my life with another preacher. There was another preacher because preachers would do you wrong. They really would. You, some, some of y'all won't be pastors. Let me tell y'all something. Anyway, let me move on. 
this preacher had done me wrong. And me and my wife had gotten together to pray. And we was getting ready to pray. And my wife looked at me and said, pray for him. I thought she had missed God and possibly needed some mental evaluation. <laughs> because how in the world am I going to pray for him? And if I saw him, my mind would be to take my truck and run him off the road. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Y'all don't like me being real. I'm sorry. It is, I'm just telling you. I wanted to take my truck and run him off the road late in the midnight hour when nobody know which way his car went off the road. You know what I'm saying? But my wife knew. But my wife knew. That that unforgiveness was a cancer eating away at my spirit man. And that I needed to start the process of forgiveness. And she told me to pray for him. I need to tell you this. It was one of the hardest prayers I ever prayed in my life. I'm serious. It was one of the hardest prayers I ever prayed in my life because Ernest didn't want to do it. But when I started praying it. When I started praying it, the Holy Spirit was able to help me to pray it so that I could sincerely pray for that person that I thought was my persecutor, the person that had criticized me and brought me down and talked about me like a dog. All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit just took it over, and I began to pray for the blessing of that person. Thank you, Jesus. Don't ever believe that, the, that you can't. You can but you just got to get it started and the Holy Spirit will help you to do it. Come on, stand with me. 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 Excuse me. Thank you, Jesus. Seriously, I want to I really deal with this. I don't want to gloss over this because in this, in this one, God ain't playing. He's not playing. And if you really sincerely have an issue, as I was preaching, I was tapping a nerve. You was like, man, that's an issue. Get off of that right there. Thank you. I want you to come, and I want to pray over you. And again, I've already told you I've had the issue. So no use you saying, they're going to talk about me. Well, let them talk and forgive them. This will be your first practice. Okay. As soon as they start talking about you, then your first practice assignment will be to forgive everybody that's talking about you. Okay, come on. I want to be able to forgive like Jesus forgave me. This is difficult. This is hard. Thank you, Jesus. It's only biblical. It's only what God wants. This is the divine will of God for our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Come on. I'm going to wait for a few more that are coming. Thank you, Jesus. Now, understanding something about forgiveness, I, I really had more things to say, but understand something about forgiveness. Forgiveness is granted in our humanness and in our relationship sake. Forgiveness does not mean that once you forgive, all of a sudden we become best friends. It's not, you, if you're going to have that expectation of forgiveness, I I'm, I'm just want to warn you, that's not the expectation to have. Now, if it does happen, wonderful, great. I've seen that happen. I've seen that happen. But it doesn't happen in every occasion. It just means that we settle the old account. And it may just mean I'm moving on with my life and you move on with yours. And I give you the permission to move on with yours and be blessed. And I'm going to move on with mine. And I pray that you give me the permission just to be blessed. You understand that? Okay. So it does not necessarily mean that we're going to become boys or girls. Or you forgive your um, um, spouse that did you wrong in the past and you're divorced now. Doesn't mean y'all going to get back together. It just means that we've offered that forgiveness and we went on. I'm, I'm free from that. Yeah. 
Now let's be biblical. Y'all want to be biblical? I think we ought to be biblical. Before I pray, because what should we pray if we don't do what the word says? Before we pray, if there's somebody in here that you need to say, hey, forgiveness, I need to give you that. Before, before we pray, if you need to do that to somebody that's in here, then you go do that before we start praying because that's, that's word. That's not me. That's word. That's what the Bible says. So if you're going to do that, you got to do that. I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you. You don't have to be in a rush. I'll wait for you. I'll, I'll wait for you. Can't get the blessings of the word now unless you do it according to the order of the word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I forgive you. You know, here, Lord, thank you, Jesus. All right. I don't like doing this, but I guess I'll do it. There are three couples in here right now. Three couples in here right now. That if you don't offer each other forgiveness today, as you've been under the influence of this word, there is a cancer happening in your marriage that is going to deteriorate it to the point of divorce. And I need you to hear the spirit of the Lord. I need you to hear the spirit of the Lord that's speaking in this place right now. You need to reconcile in a way that's real and authentic. You need to reconcile in a way that's real and authentic. You need to offer forgiveness and mean it from the heart. God says, when you offer the forgiveness and mean it from your heart, I will back you up in the spirit. And I will give you the strength to be able to carry it out and live from this point forward. God says, listen to me, that this is a defining moment for your marriage and for your home. Please, please, please obey the spirit of the Lord. Please obey the spirit of the Lord. Please obey the spirit of the Lord. So, Father, everybody make it back. I'm sorry. I'm starting to pray. Did everybody make it back? No one's saying anything to me, so I guess I'll keep going. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. We're not gathered at this.